not commercial. In this episode, we'll be talking about the differences of a conventional loan versus a hard money loan for your real estate investing. Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of Investing with the Baldo Vinos. I'm Josh. Hannah's not here. Aw, oh, so sad. <laughs> this channel we discuss our real estate journey so if you are enjoying our content so far make sure to like and subscribe in this episode i'm going to be covering conventional loans versus hard money loans um, and how that applies to rental properties um, so first let's define what a conventional loan is and let's define what a hard money loan a conventional loan is your typical loan that you go to a um, your usual bank like your local credit union or uh, you know, Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, et cetera. And then a hard money loan is, you know, it sounds scary, but it's just another word for a, a different type of private lender. A company that has a fund, which then invests in real estate deals. Other times it could also just be a small family or partnership group that's actually using their own hard earned money. So first let's talk the differences in down payments. Um, the first with the conventional loan is most people think, hey, it's 20% down for a conventional loan. Um, and that is true if you don't plan on living in the property. If you don't plan on living on the property, you have to put at least 20 to 25% down. If you plan on living in the property, you could potentially qualify um, either for a VA loan if you're a veteran, also potentially use a FHA loan, which may allow you to do a 3.5% down if you do live in the property for at least a year. Um, but that's how much you can expect to put down for a a conventional loan. Uh, for a hard money loan, you can expect to put anywhere between 10 and 25% down. And that's just going to vary depending on what lender you use. Uh, so that's the difference in down payments. The next difference is points and closing costs. When you buy a house or sell a house, there's going to be some closing costs, basically the transactional fee that goes in between the different parties. Um, your points is defined as uh, the percentage that you are paying up front based on the total purchase of, uh, purchase price. So for example, let's just say I'm buying a house for $100,000 just to make numbers easy. On the conventional side, you can expect to pay anywhere between you know half a point, so 0 0.5 and up. Um, depending on your credit score, depending on um, your income, your debt to income ratio and things like that, the bank will define their own criteria. On a hard money side, uh, you can expect to pay anywhere between two and five points up front, um, which is a significant difference, right? In addition to some of the points that you're paying up front, whether, regardless if you're doing the conventional loan or the hard money loan, you can also expect to have different, uh, potentially some different legal fees, underwriting fees, uh, doc fees, title and escrow fees, insurance, the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, that varies a lot. And the best way to kind of just figure out, hey, how much you can expect to pay up front is just to get on the phone and call them and say, hey, you know, here's my, you know, here's my, here's my credit score. Here's my income. Here's a property I'm looking at. Like, what can you ballpark what I could expect? 99% um, of the time, a hard money loan will be more expensive. The next one is going to be interest, right? So the interest on the loan, of course, is the percentage that you are paying, you know, over the duration of the loan in order to have this loan product. Um, for a conventional loan, you know, especially because interest rates are pretty low right now, you can expect to pay anywhere between two and 5% interest, again, depending on your credit score, income, debt to income ratio, et cetera. For a hard money loan, uh, you can expect to pay anywhere between, say, 8.5% to 15%. Again, a crazy stark difference. With a bank, really, their interest rates are tied to the criteria that you, that, that you are as an individual, and then based on what the federal bank decides is going to be the you know the national starting interest rate. On the hard money side, it is uh, largely relationship based. So the first time you ever do business with them, also if you don't have a lot of fix and flips or rental properties and and rehabs uh, under your belt, like like we do, we only have you know a couple. We were paying. 12, 12, 12 and a half percent interest rate, um, which, you know, can seem like a lot. Um, as you do more deals with them, the points decrease, um, the interest rates decrease, but also just because you're now a repeat customer, you understand the system, they know you a little bit more, you know them a little bit more, um, and, and it's just easier to do business as you develop the relationships with them. You know, the next difference I wanna go over is when should you use the conventional loan versus when should you use a hard money loan? At the start, a conventional loan is the, you know, I guess for the sake of a better term, is the more traditional route. If you plan on living in it, 
doing a house hack and you only want to put three and a half percent down or you know zero percent down if you happen to be military then that would be a great way to go the property is particularly already rent ready or you don't need to you're not worried about if the property is so distressed that it won't appraise meaning that most banks will only want to lend to a property that is rent ready that you know as they deem is safe for someone to occupy a lot of the uh, uh, properties that you see on HGTV may not necessarily be rent ready and so for that for that purpose you know if you wanted to to be your your HGTV fix and flipper you may have to look at either using private money or using a hard money loan to be able to secure those properties the next thing to think about is on a conventional loan uh, nine times out of ten you're looking at a 20 25 30 year term on that payment right which means that your mortgage payments are significantly less for a hard money loan uh, it's meant to be short term it's meant to be basically the rehab and uh, either you know if you're doing a fix and flip to exit quickly to sell it right away or to then refinance once you have a tenant in there and the property is stabilized terms for a hard money loan are anywhere between six and twelve months the sooner you can get out of a hard money loan, the better, right? And the hard money lenders also know that and they're okay with that. Well, some of them are. Uh, some of them do have, you know, a, a minimum seasoning period before you can refi out. Some don't have any prepayment periods in, in, uh, where you can either refi or sell the property off. Something that you definitely want to ask a hard money lender in your conversations. Uh, but it's, it's a tool belt that's meant to bridge you onto your next step and to only be used short term. And I, and I say that because that's the most important part is, yes, it sounds expensive, points are expensive, interest rates are more expensive, um, and it is a lot more expensive, but it's meant to be a short-term fix because a bank won't lend on, you know, that house with the caved-in roof that needs a whole new, you know, foundation repairs, et cetera, but private lenders will. And that's where you use hard money is to go ahead and get in there for two, three months, do your rehab, get a renter in there or flip it. And then all of a sudden you are done with the hard money loan. Um, one thing to also note with the hard money loan is that uh, it is also interest only payments within a balloon payment at the end with the remaining balance due. Oh, I have a question from the audience on the couch over there. A balloon payment is um, the, is the, when you're paying the total amount at the very, very end. So say on a hard money loan, you're making interest only payments. So just for the sake of easy numbers, say on a hundred thousand dollar loan at 10% interest, you're paying a thousand dollars a month. So every single month you're paying a thousand dollars and nothing goes towards the principal. When you're ready to pay off the loan, you now still have to pay that hundred thousand dollars. Depending on the hard money lender, they'll also potentially lend on um, the rehab costs. For for example, our Ellsworth property, they finance 90% of the purchase and 100% of the rehab. Now it's reimbursement on the rehab, which means that um, we do them in kind of different phases or draws as they say. Um, so the first draw we defined that was going to be the roof and some of the structural repairs that have to happen first. Um, and then we are fronting and paying the contractor if the contractor chooses to then bill us, you know, for materials up front or sometimes labor, depending on how you worked it out with them. Um, and then the uh, hard money lender will then reimburse us once they validate that those were done. That is another tool there as well. Just another, you know, kind of admin step, but it is helpful, especially if you don't have forty, fifty thousand dollars to front for a rehab. Um, it's something that you can do in the short term. One thing I really want you to take away about, you know, conventional hard money lenders, just lending in general, is that at the end of the day, they're people, right? The banker, the loan originator that you're talking to at the bank is a person. They understand, hopefully, you know, you, the investor mindset, they understand your scenario and are able, you know, they can converse with you. If, especially if you're new, ask all the dumb questions and find a, you know, kind of preface the conversation with, hey, I, like the, this is my first investment property. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, do that for both your hard money lenders, the banks, whoever you're talking to. And that way you don't have to sound or, or the next thing I would say is that um, as you talk to these bankers more and you kind of develop or these lenders more and you develop a relationship, um, they can help validate the deal because they have their set criteria in which they'll lend on. And if your deal doesn't make sense, whether it be on the conventional side and they say, hey, you know, my appraiser or, or you know, uh, my lending team is not going to approve this deal, right? Your credit, your debt to income, the, the well, for whatever it is, it doesn't meet the criteria, so they won't fund it. The same goes for a hard money lender. If you are looking at a project and your purchase price is maybe too high or your rehab cost that you're estimating is way wrong, right? Whatever it is, um, or 
or the after repair value is not what they're calculating, they can say, hey man, I'm sorry, your numbers don't make sense for, for our team. So you may want to recheck your numbers. And that's helpful, right? Because it also give you kind of basically a, a percentage base of, 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 of how much they can lend um, based on the numbers that you're giving them, based on your, your, your projected after repair values and, and expected costs. And the last thing I will say is that uh, Lenders, uh, much like the agents, also especially who are you know lenders who are investor friendly, have a ton of referrals and recommendations. So if if they've been working with investors for a while, um, they'll know which contractors people are using. Especially if they're going out there to validate work, they'll know who they're who different investors are using as a contractor or as a property manager. Um, or you know, hard money lenders will also have um, referrals for. Uh, rental loans, long-term 30-year rental loans on the refi. Um, so all the time, you know, keep them updated with the progress, be, you know, be open to talking to them. Um, and because, uh, you know, especially on the hard money side, a lot of them are also in re, uh, real estate investors as well. So that they understand the game. And if they like you, again, it's people business. If they like you, they want to keep you and bring you into the circle. Um, and so with our hard money lender, Nick over at Wildcat Lending in Columbus, he's been super helpful in checking my deals and allowing me to bounce off questions whenever, um, giving me referrals to commercial lenders on that refi side to contractors. And so I'm just, it's been fun. And, uh, you know, especially having someone who's, who's actively doing deals in Columbus, that's also on the lender side. Like it, it I mean, it only helps you to have the lender on your side, especially as you're going through a project. Anyways, if you found this helpful, make sure to like this video. It helps us a lot. Um, we're still learning a lot on the way, and I hope that you're enjoying our journey too. Um, if you want to keep up to date on all the different deals that we're doing, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, you can also follow me on social, on Instagram and TikTok and all that goodness down below, right? Uh, and then, of course, if you want any links to stocks below, you can click my Robinhood and Webull link down below, and that'll help me a lot. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or uh, comments below. If you've, if you've talked to hard money lenders, um, please let me know down below. Also, if you have any recommendations for uh, refi lenders, I haven't decided uh, which lender. Our, our Ellsworth property will hopefully be done with the rehab in the next seven to 10 days. Um, and then at that point, we're gonna work on getting tenants in there and then refiing out the property once it's stabilized. So if you have a, uh, a, a long-term cash out refi lender that you like, let me know. That'll help a lot and I'll really appreciate it. Um, other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.